Right, are you okay now? Should we give you a... Are you, are you going to have a little treat and then go? Ready? Look at the camera. Okay, there we go. All right, go on, off you go. And welcome, welcome, welcome to live poppy making. Ugh, slightly damp. Why were you damp? From being outside, probably. Let's hope so. Um, going to make a felt poppy this morning, okay, using merino wool tops. There's a lot to get through. Hope you're all well. Here's the poppy we're going to be making, look. Um, it's a lovely sunny day here in the UK. In, in fact, remarkably hot and sunny for the time of year. Um, so let's crack on with making this and then you can all go and sit in the garden and make one, maybe. Okay, so what I'm going to be using today to make the, the, the poppy is merino wool tops in bright red, cherry red, okay, that makes the main poppy. Then I'm also going to be using the most wonderful color, which is called smoke, which when you look into one of those big red oriental poppies is exactly the color of that kind of dusty polleny bit that you get in the middle of the poppy, spot on. It's a good color, that smoke. It's actually a lovely, lovely color, sort of dusty purpley color. Love it, bluey purpley colour. And then also I'm going to be using black. I'm going to be using black for the stamens and a few of the markings. Okay, so the other things I'm going to be using are our basic little wet felting mat and netting, okay? And this is great for doing the felt flowers with because you don't need to make great, huge, enormous pieces of felt. You can use little pieces and this is the perfect size for that. Don't you start barking again. And then also I'm going to be using some needle felting equipment, okay? So this is just our piece of foam, it comes with four needles. It does come with a multi-needle tool as well, but I'm not going to be using that today. Okay, so that's the basic needle felting kit. I'm also going to be using some soapy water. Everyone's got a bit of that. Washing up liquid, lukewarm water. I'm going to be using a bar of soap, any old soap will do. And the other kind of sort of slightly more unusual things that I'll be using are our stiffener called Stiffen Stuff, which I use to stiffen the stamens with. Don't say that after you've uh, had a, a night out. <laughs> stiffen Stuff, it's great um, for doing this kind of work with felt. It does sort of plasticize it slightly, but it makes things stand up straight. So that's really cool if you want to get some of that. And I'll be using a tiny bit of our famous Gemtac glue that I use for pretty much everything. So that's the basis of what I'll be doing. I will be uh, referring to my book, Felting Fabulous Flowers, where this project is featured, mostly because at the end you've got all the templates. You've got the poppy template here for you to trace. Um, and obviously the leaf as well. Plus it does go through in step-by-step -step pictures all of the techniques that I'll be using this morning to make this with, okay? So it's worth investing in this book and I'll, if I've got time, I'll show you a few more of the flowers from that book after we've done this. Okay, so to start with, you're going to need to make a basic sheet of felt using the merino wool tops, okay? So that's using the cherry red and using the bright red, okay? I have got one here that I made earlier that I've cut my shapes out of, ready to turn into the poppy, okay? But I am just gonna very quickly outline how you will do it, because I know some of you have bought the wool tops ready to do this with me this morning, so here I go. Okay, starting with, starting with the cherry red, actually, um, you're going to need about 20 grams, which is about a metre. Okay, that should be sufficient to lay out the amount that you need. I've gone through this a number of times in lots of my other tutorials, but how to pull the wool apart 
in the correct way, really important that you do do this. So really just take a little bit of time to practice this, get your head around it, especially if you haven't got my book. You're pulling the very ends of the wool tops gently and releasing them to get quite a fine, um, wispy amount of wool tops. And then you're going to lay them down directly onto the bamboo mat. So I've laid out the bamboo mat in front of me. I have just put it onto a tea towel, working onto a waterproof surface. So Chris, if we could just go to the overhead camera, I'm just going to quickly show everyone how I'm laying out the cherry wet red wool tops to start with, okay? So for any of you that are struggling to pull the wool apart, I'm just going to do this in slow motion just once. So holding it just six to eight inches down with the hand you don't write with, okay? And then using the hand you do write with, you're just taking the very, very ends and you're releasing them very, very gently. They shouldn't be hard to pull apart, okay? And you should be able to just um, pull them off very easily. And then you're just going to overlap the wool tops as you're laying it down. I'm laying it all in the same direction, which is the opposite direction to the slats on the bamboo mat. And I'm just gonna quickly show you how I'm doing this. I'll start off, I'm, really you want to lay out an area that's about 12 inches by about eight inches. I think I've probably gone off the bottom of the screen now. Let me just pull it up a little tiny bit like that. There we go. And then just I'm just going to put a little bit more at the top here. And that's the cherry red wool that I've started off with. OK, so that's the first layer of wool done. I am doing this super fast. I'm sure you want to take more time. This is the second colour I'll be using, which is the bright red wool tops. And I'm going to be doing exactly the same thing with this. Again, you'll need about a metre, probably about 75 centimetres. And I'm going in the opposite direction over the top. So let me just do this in slow motion. Six to eight inches down here. Otherwise, you're holding onto the fibres. And then just releasing the very ends, what not to do. That's what not to do, OK? This is what to do, just the very ends, OK? So I'm just going to do this super fast now, and I'm just going to cover the whole thing with the cherry red. Come, sir. Now, come back to me a sec, Chris, so I can chat. So if you're going to do the poppy leaf as well, which looks like this, which looks rather splendid behind the poppy. Then you could kill two birds with one stone and you could lay out the wool tops for the leaf at the same time that you're felting it all together. That's my top tip there. So rather than make a separate piece of green afterwards, you might as well just do it all in one go. OK, so I'm just going to carry on until we've got this all completely covered in red and then we're ready to felt it together. So I'm not gonna lay out my green wool tops today just for speed, but it's using, sorry, yes. Gillian, could you move your glasses off the oh, microphone, gosh. please? Okay. Because it's rattling and it's very annoying. <laughs> okay, master, done. Okay, so I'm using um, sage green for the, for the leaf, that's what you need, but I'm not gonna lay it out today. Okay, right, next thing, back to the overhead, please, Christopher. So I'm using this, which is a piece of netting, okay? I'm not gonna do this whole process, but I'm just going to quickly outline it to you. And I'm just gonna quickly show you, uh, show you how to wet it all down the correct way. Okay, so this is the netting over the top. Washing up liquid, squirt of washing up liquid, fill it up with lukewarm water. That then gets sprinkled all over the top. Then you're going to use your cloth to wet down and get all of the air out of the wool tops, okay? Like this. And when you've got all of the air out, I'm just gonna do this top corner here so that you can see how it should be. Cause I don't want to do, spend the whole time talking about how to make the felt. Cause I do cover that in lots of other tutorials. So it's about making a simple flat piece of wet felting, okay? Using cherry red on one side, and plain red on the other side. It should be flat like this bit here, okay? Not puffy like this. And once it's flat, you're gonna rub it for 10 minutes on that side, back to me, Chris, and then you're going to rub it on 10 minutes on the other side. So it should be really, really well rubbed together. Then you're gonna to go to the sink, you're gonna rinse it, okay? And you're gonna get most of the soap out of it. And then you're gonna come back and you're gonna roll it in the bamboo mat, all right? So I'm just gonna remove this and I'm going to take the piece that I've already made. I'm just gonna walk you through the rolling of it, even though mine's already rolled. Let's pretend it isn't. I've just come back from the sink, it's rinsed. It's in my bamboo mat, okay? Back to the overhead, please, Chris. I'm rolling it up, okay? And I'm gonna roll it backwards and forwards 20 times 
in each direction on both sides. You say, what I mean by that is you roll it that way, then you turn it 90 degrees clockwise, then you roll it up again, then you're rolling it another 20, and so on, and then you do it this way and this way, and then you turn it over and you do it this way, this way, this way, this way. Okay, so that's a full roll, okay? Once you've done that, you go back to the sink, very, very hot water, very, very cold water, make sure all the soap's out, come back and repeat the rolling. That's it, then you've made your beautiful, handmade, hand-rolled, piece of felt ready to make your poppy. Okay, have I moved this out of the way now? Is it still in the same place? Hopefully it's still in the same place. So now it's about turning this into a poppy, okay? And you do need those templates from the back of my book, or you can just, you know, go with it, eyeball it, do your own thing, you know, does it really matter? Cut out some poppy shapes. Okay, so what, what I've done, let me show you the poppy shapes. Let me show you the poppy shapes. So if you go back to the overhead, Chris, um, these are the two template shapes from the back of the book. Okay, are they in the right place? Can you see them, do you think? I think they are. <laughs> He's huffing and puffing. Um, so I've cut, obviously, one of those and one of those. Uh, what, how many petals? One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. So one of them's five petaled, one of them's four petaled. They, you know, they're very subtle petal shapes. All right, so let's uh, move the piece of felt and the templates out of the way, and those have now been cut out, okay? So they're cherry red on one side, they're bright red on the other side. I'm actually going to use the, um, the shapes bright red uppermost for both of them, okay? And one is going to sit on top of t'other, like that, okay? So, the next step involves a little bit of needle felting. Okay, so we've done the wet felting bit for now. There's more to come. And now we're going to do a little bit of needle felting. So I'm just going to grab my foam and my needles. I'm just going to use 38 gauge star profile needles. They are the ones that come with the kit. Okay, and I'm just going to pop my shapes down here. Now, you'll notice if you look at an actual poppy, hello? Wrong picture, talking to the camera. Well, you're showing something. Yeah, not yet, not yet, Christopher. <laughs> <laughs> he loves it when I do that, not. Um, you'll notice when you look at an actual poppy, the markings on it are obviously very dramatic and quite interesting. So that's what we're gonna try and recreate there here. But in so doing, we're also going to try and attach them together a little bit, these two different poppy layers if you like. So the two colours I'll be using here are the smoky colour, okay, just a little tiny bit and a little tiny bit of the black as well, okay. Now if we go to the overhead. So just a tiny bit of these and it's up to you where you put the markings but you want to think about how they look on the actual flower. I'm using the 38 gauge star profile needle and I'm just going to gently start to stab the tiniest, tiniest, tiniest bit of wool tops. Okay, so I've got my smaller piece on top of my larger piece. I'm just going to move it up a little bit so we're more or less in the centre. And then I'm just going to start to do this. Now, so what I'm doing, as you can see, the wool tops is, is, is obviously attaching itself here, but also what's happening is the two pieces um, are attaching themselves together with the needle felting, which is kind of what you want to happen as well. So we're just going to do that. I'm just going to do it really, really quickly. I would take a lot longer to do this if I was doing it for real, but I'm just using a few tiny bits. I'm using a tiny bit of black okay and a tiny 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 bit of the smoke and I'm just being quite random but you kind of want it to radiate out from the center so if I was going to lay it all out first it would probably look a little bit like this kind of thing all right so just have you got any questions yet Christopher or not yet so yes, far so good why am I here why are you here? Oh my goodness, that's very dramatic. Um, is it because I made? Is it because I made you get up so early this morning? Yes. Oh dear, are you a bit grumpy? Are you a bit grumpy this yes. morning. Yes. <laughs> All right. So this is what I would do. I'd lay the wool tops out first. Maybe I was being a bit gung ho there and just sort of doing it as I went. But it would make sense for you guys to lay it all out first. And as you can see from the finished one, 
this here's a bit here can you see underneath so these are the markings we're aiming for you can add as little or as much as you like here with these markings and I'm not going to bore you by um, completely stabbing the whole thing all together but that's how we're doing yeah we're doing okay so just keep going with that. If you want to, you can use two of the needles together. If you want to watch another tutorial, I'll talk more about needle felting. But it's really, really important that you um, don't do this at too much of an angle. Be careful you don't break your needle. It's a gentle stabbing action in and out. You're going right through the foam, in, uh, sorry, right through the felt into the foam, okay? And eventually, you'll see that all of this fluffiness comes out the back here, which you can, don't worry too much about that, that doesn't matter. Um, but that's also what's holding these two pieces together now. And we will add a little bit of glue as well, but they're, they're now held together. Now the other interesting thing you can do with this is you can start to sort of shape the poppy a little bit and you can start to make it a bit more cup shaped if you wanted to, all right? So you can spend a little bit more time just going around, stabbing into the middle and holding it like this. Did you just go double it. needle then? Yeah, yeah, that's what I was just saying. Were you not paying attention Obviously when I not. said you can use two together? <laughs> okay, so yeah, just to make it sort of sit more cup-like in your hand, you can really stab at this more. Now, if you wanted to use some of our other needles, which are the 36 gauge ones, they're a bit more sort of heavy duty. They may ma add a little bit more difference with the sculpting, but at the same time, they will add a, a larger hole, which you might not want to see, although they're not terribly noticeable, the holes. So I would just spend a little bit of time using your four needles or your two needles at once, or you could use your multi-needle multi tool here actually, just to shape it. So get your markings on and get it shaped into a slight cup shape like that. Okay, now we're going to just talk about this center piece here. Okay, so the easiest way to make this is to wet felt the ball that's going to sit in the center, or wet felt a ball that's going to sit in the center. And this is gonna be made from that wool tops I was talking about called smoke, okay? Um, what I tend to do is pull a piece off uh, about five or six inches long, and then just check that it's the right size, especially if you've not used the template in the book and you've decided to cut your own shaped petals uh, because you know they could be any size you want to make um, a centerpiece that's about an inch wide okay now the best way to figure this out is to pull some wool off and then screw it up really really tightly in your hands and make a little ball okay and check whether or not this is the right size to sit in the middle as it happens that's a little tiny bit small but I'm going to go with it and I'm just going to take a little bit more and wrap it around the outside to make it a tiny bit bigger. So when I'm doing this, I'm taking the wool tops and I'm keeping them nice and spread out. I don't want too many folds in them because I don't want this little ball to turn into a little felt brain, okay? So we need to keep it nice and smooth. And I've made another video, uh, I think it's the 3D felting Mm, balls and beads, that's it, where I talk more about making these if you get stuck. Then I'm going to take my soapy water and I am just going to, if you go to the overhead, Chris, I'm just going to get that wet all the way through, okay, like so. And I'm just going to make sure it's really, really soapy. Then I'm going to grab a bar of soap. I'm just going to sprinkle a little bit of my water on the bar of soap as well, okay. And then I'm going to start to just coat the outside of the ball. I'm also gonna make sure my hands are really, really soapy too, like so. And then I'm just going to start to gently roll this ball. Now, it's really important, if you come back to me a sec, Chris, it's really important that you don't press too hard when you're rolling this, okay? If you really squidge it and roll it, really, really hard in your hands, it's gonna squish and you'll turn it into a little egg shape. So keep it really, really light and gentle with the rolling, okay? You're gonna roll this for about five or 10 minutes. You don't wanna make it rock, rock hard, but you do want it to felt sufficiently so it looks felted. But basically we are now going to move on and we're going to um, needle felt onto this to make the center of the poppy. So sure enough, I've got one that I've already made, of course. Oh, that's really soapy. I'm trying to dry my hands on something that's not soapy and that's really soapy. Let me dry them on here because I have failed to bring myself another little towel. Don't worry, that's fine. Right, okay. Meanwhile, 
Meanwhile, Lisa. Yes. Oh, have you got a question? I do. Go on then. Lisa Van Helsing mm. on uh, Facebook says, do you have to wait for each bit to dry before using it? Well, that's a very good question. I mean, when, we do, when I'm running the workshop here, no, we don't. Okay, you can use the, the, the felt wet. However, sometimes we also do use an iron to just dry it a little bit. You don't want it sopping wet. So obviously when you're doing that last bit of rinsing and rolling, get all the water squeezed out as much as you can and then do your final roll. But then it's quite handy to just stick the iron on, give it a few irons over a tea towel and get most of the moisture out so it's nearly dry or leave it to dry. It's, I prefer to work with it when it's dry, but you can work with it when it's wet. All right, so that's the answer to that. The same applies to this ball. So when I made the ball earlier, what I do is when I finished the ball, hang on, let me just remove all the bits of black from it. I um, just roll it around on a towel or a tea towel and it just dries pretty quickly, to be honest. All right, so here's a ball I made earlier, all right? So I'm just, if we just go back to the overhead for a second, Chris, now, um, I'm just going to show you how it's, it's still a little bit squidgy, all right? So you don't want it rock, rock hard, okay? It's gonna sit in the center here. Here's my one that I've made before, okay? So what we're going to be doing now is we're going to be creating these markings on the middle of the ball. Can everyone see that? Shall I use this special little camera look? Oh, sorry, a big head and nose suddenly appeared in the way. Okay, um, I don't know if I can make this work, can I? I don't know. There we go, there we go. look, okay. No, so, there you go. so this bit here is the bit that we're going to make, okay? And this one here is the one that I've made so far. So you can see, so far it's just a ball like this. So I'm gonna be adding these markings onto it. And I start off by doing one, two, three, four okay if we go back to the overhead chris please so um what i tend to do is i get some little pieces of black ready now these little pieces of black are really really very very fine okay there's hardly anything to them but what i'm going to be doing is just i'm going to leave it on the red actually because i think you can probably see it a bit better because it's the same color as the foam i'm just going to be laying them out like this i'm going to be taking my 38 gauge star felting needle and i am going to be just stabbing it into the ball okay now the action of stabbing it into the ball will not only attach it but it will also indent it slightly and that's what we want so you can see with this one <clears throat> Um, you've got little, I don't know if you can see it, but hopefully you did just now, you've got little indentations going around, okay, so it's not just smooth still, it's almost like a pumpkin, you've got a pumpkin effect, okay. So I start off by doing a crisscross going this way, whoops, like this, okay. And I'm just stabbing it in place first. So when you're using this felting needle now, be really careful you don't break it. Just use it really gently. Don't stab it in too violently. Am I in the right place here, Chris, for everybody? Yeah, yeah. just about. Good. Um, and then the more you stab, so let me see if I can make a difference. The more you stab, it will indent. There we go. And it starts to look a bit more pumpkin-like. And then obviously once you've done the cross that way, then you're going to go this way, do a piece going that way, and a piece going that way. Now when you're pulling these wool tops apart, you are literally just taking the smallest amount, like this much almost, okay? About that much, if you can see that in my hand, okay? So it's really, really small amounts, and then just guiding them in with your felting needle, and then making sure that each bit is in the right place, okay? And then just stabbing them until you get this pumpkin effect like this, all right? And then we're gonna sit this in there later on. The next thing we're going to do, and I'm gonna show you how to do, is how to make these stamens, okay? So if you just come back to me for a sec, Chris. So the stamens are quite laborious, I'm not gonna lie, okay? So that I have a little method, okay, for you to make them slightly faster, all right? because you need to make quite a few. Actually, I can't remember how many you need to make. Sorry, that was very remiss of me. I think it's about- 320. It's about 320. Uh, making the stamens, here we go. So yes, you need to make approximately 16 stamens. 
each me measuring about oh, 15 centimetres long. Okay, and then we use the fabric stiffener on them. So here's what I do to make the stamen. So now we're going back to a bit more wet felting, moving the needle felting out of the way. Okay, and then I'm going to show you how to pull off a stamen, as it were. Okay. Stop sniggering, Christopher. It's really shocking, your sense of humour, honestly. It's just, oh, le the less said about that, the better. I'm going to be quiet. All right, so did you see what I did there? So I'm just taking the very side of it and pulling it down like this, okay? And then I'm just elongating it slightly, like so, okay? Because what you want to do here, you want to twist it, okay? And it, it will need to go through the eye of a large needle. I, like I use a yarn darner. I'm obsessed with yarn darners. They're fab because they have a big eye and a sharp point. I'm talking about needles here. It's like a, sew, like a sewing needle. It's not a knitting needle. Hang on, I've got one somewhere that I've now misplaced. But anyway, that's what you need. Here we go. Here's a yarn darner. If you go to the overhead shot, Chris, they come in various sizes. But they have a really large eye and then a really sharp point. And when I'm making these stamens, I'm twisting them, okay, so that you can see that they're thin enough to go through the eye of the yarn darner, all right? So that's what we're aiming for here. Okay, back to me a sec. So what I do is I pull off these great big lengths, all right, of um, stamen, unfelted stamen. <laughs> Such a weird thing I do, isn't it? Who, who'd have thought you'd be doing this for a living, Gillian? Right, okay, and then I am going to, I'm just going to pull off three for now, but you're going to make 15, and you can do them all at the same time. 16. So what was it, 16, sorry. 15 centimetres long time, 16, sorry. Um, so lucky you are here, my darling. Otherwise, I'd be telling people the wrong thing. Well, you wouldn't be on the telly, would you? <laughs> well, I would be, but I'd just be on my phone. Anyway, let's not get into that. Okay, so what you need to do, one at a time, is you need to wet them down, all right? So the soapy water goes on, okay? If you go to the overhead a sec, Chris, and then you're gonna need to make them all wet and soapy, one by one, and they do need to be quite soapy, all right? So if you feel like they're not soapy, get the bar of soap, okay? And just drag them across the bar or make the soap wet first. Look, I've got all bits going on all over here. I've got washi tape. Okay. Make the soap wet first. This is quite a good way of doing it, actually. Drag the stamen across it. Okay. And just twiddle it now. Twiddle it. All right. To keep it nice and soapy like so. All right. So there's one. Whoopsie. There's another one. I'm just going to do those two for now for time okay but what I would suggest you do is that you get oh it's nice having the dog treats on the table let's move those out of the way what I suggest you do is get all 15 ready to go all lined up okay and then what you're going to do is you're just going to once they're all ready to go you're going to just flip the end of the mat over the top of them like this if you get back that's it and then roll it back and forwards like this can you hear Perry's that lovely noise? Perry's asking if she can make it, it, just one really big one, but I think what you've just done there shows that she couldn't. Uh, well, you, actually, Kerry, if, come back to me a sec, Chris. If you've got a really big bamboo mat, one of our big bamboo mats, you could actually make a smaller number of very long ones. Um, I don't think you could just make one really long one because it probably wouldn't be enough unless you went the other way, but it might be unmanageable. <laughs> so I'd keep them manageable. Okay, actually, I think this is a fair way of doing it, but if you've got a larger bamboo mat, probably I would use that given the choice. Um, so just back to the overhead again. So doing this though, rather than rolling them up in the mat like we do with the felt normally, just flipping the top over. This is the best way to make stamens in particular. Also things like handbag handles, anything that's a long tubey thing. But obviously these are quite fine, okay? So once I've done that, probably I would say for a few minutes, okay? I would then make sure I would rinse it, rinse them in really, really hot water and I'd then make sure they're soapy again and then I'd carry on doing it for another five minutes. So they're really, really well felted. Then I'd rinse all of the soap and water out. 
okay? So then you're left with these really long stamens that are felted. Then what I do is stiffen them. So I get myself a dish or a saucer and I put some of the stiffened stuff into it. If you go to the overhead shot, Chris, so we can just see here, this is the stiffened stuff, but I have watered it down a little bit. So this is this, okay? Um, I know we're out of stock on the website, more is coming on Monday. In fact, I might put it in stock so that you can order it and then we'll send it out to you. Um, I'm just going to pop my stamen in and just draw it through like that. Why are you laughing? I don't know. Because <laughs> I'm stiffening stamens. Yes. When I'm stiffening stamens. Okay. And then, <laughs> I'm going to move that out of the way. Then I leave them to dry, okay? So I'm just gonna do that one, but I would leave it to dry. I'd leave it on in a warm place. If you've got the radiators on, we haven't at the moment because we're having a heat wave in September, but um, a heater or a radiator's ideal, you know, just a warm place for it to dry and it will dry straight, okay? Now I've made my fingers all sticky. Let me just rinse this one here. Um, <laughs> what? Still, he's got the giggles. Guys, he has got the giggles because I am stiffening stamens. I don't know why. I just It's a normal thing for me to do, but he's got the giggles. All right. So anyway, once those are stiffened, I think it's because I keep saying stiffened, to be honest. Then you're going to um, thread it into the yarn darner that I was just talking about. OK, I am just going to make myself make my life slightly easier by trimming the end off because I'm live on the telly box and, you know, quite frankly, threading a yarn darner with a stiffened, stiffened stamen live on the telly, you know, it's With quite sticky tricky. fingers. With sticky fingers. <laughs> anyway, look, let's move swiftly on. What I'm going to show you now is how to make these stamens. Now, bear in mind, the ones that you will have made and will be using will be stiffer, okay? So they'll stand straighter. I'm not going to say that word, Christopher, stop looking at me. Uh, this is how you then sew them in, all right? So I'm going to, if you go to the overhead shot for me, Chris, please. So I'm going to go down through the two layers of felt and I'm going to pull this through, okay? And then I'm going to maybe just judge it on the back here and I'm going to come up the other side there, all right? Then I'm going to get my scissors and I'm going to snip, and I'm going to snip. So there I've got two stamens, okay? And then I'll probably be able to get another two out of this piece, to be honest. So then I'm just going to go down again, okay? And then just get more, slightly more carefully this time. I'm going to come up the other side, I like that. So yours will be better because they'll be stiffer, but these are a little bit wibbly wobbly. Okay, and so what you're going to do is you're going to keep going until you've got them all the way around there, okay? And then, once you've got them all around there and you've made your centre ball here, a great big squirty blob of um, gem tack glue goes underneath here. That then sits in the middle. And then I also tend to just um, do a little bit of, oops, do a little bit of needle felting around the edge here as well. So you can get yourself another bit of smoke wool and you can go round the very edge as well, just to make sure it's all sitting in place. So let me get the one that, that's finished. So you can do a little bit of needle felting, okay? You can just make sure it's definitely attached. If necessary, you could actually um, uh, do a little bit of sewing as well if you want to get some matching thread just come up and down make sure it's not going to come out especially if you're wearing it as a corsage because you don't want anything to sort of uh, detach itself or drop off if it's going to get quite a lot of wear and tear and it's going to be brushed against and it's on your coat or something so um, I would definitely recommend using the a plenty of gem tack underneath it a little bit of needle felting as well possibly a little bit of sewing but that's basically it once it's all attached together then you could put the corsage attachment on the back the little lip, uh, the little pin that we sell uh what's it called brooch back that's right brooch back mounting oh, that's such that just amuses me so much i don't know why uh brooch back mounting on the back and then obviously if you've made your little leaf as well you can attach that using some glue if you're lazy like me or you could sew it on as well which is probably more sensible so putting your brooch back and your leaf on the back and then you have got the most beautiful poppy 
to wear on your lapel uh, or on your hat or on your bag or on your dog. Betty, would you like? To... Oh, she's gone to sleep. So that's it, folks. That's all there is to it. Do I have any more questions about this? Because I feel like there haven't been many. No. Oh, OK. There's been some some comments by <laughs> Kerry Zarp, obviously. <laughs> Uh, about she seems to about the stiffening uh, she seems to have a problem with something being droopy I'm not sure what <laughs> okay. um, so um, if anyone's got any questions ask them right now let me just show you I feel like when we did the first session about my felting flowers book we were in my conservatory it was the beginning of lockdown we didn't have an awful lot of time for me to show you anything close up. I felt like the camera was an awfully long way away. So maybe we could just use the overhead camera here and I could just show you a few more <clears throat> flowers from the book in case you're interested, if you want to go to it, Chris. So that's the piece Lily there. This is gorgeous. This is the fuchsia. Um, Why don't you show people on the close up camera, Gillian? Yeah, okay, Christopher, thank you. Okay, it's not a very long lead on the old oh. close up camera. I'm doing well, my I'm best here, then. boy, doing my best. Right, okay, this is the fuchsia, okay. Then I've got the little cherry blossom, actually, which was the one I made before, okay. That was the one I made on the live. And then there is the pink. This is the hibiscus. Now, I remember making this one in the bath. I made the stamen of that in the bath because I was up against it and I That's needed a, what you were doing. a soapy environment. <laughs> Um, I was just going to try and find ooh, if I can hoik out the lily because it's rather lovely. It's looking a little bit floppy as well, but that's the lily. Okay, anyway, back to me. So um, if you want to make any of those uh, lovely, lovely flowers, they are all in my book, Felting Fabulous Flowers. Oh, I have a question. He's got his hand How up. How like can you tell which needle is the 38? gauge okay so the 38 and gauge which is the 36 gauge. the 38 gauge staff profile needle if you twiddle it or, or on top of your hand you will see uh it's quite it's got a lot of different sides to it okay and you won't be able to distinguish them very easily because it's star shaped in profile it also looks slightly thinner than the other needle if you twiddle the 36 gauge needle in your hand, you will see very well, unless you've got dreadful eyesight, you should be able to see three distinctive sides because it's triangular, all right? And it will look bigger as well and it will look sort of um, more substantial. So that's the basic difference. Um, you know, if you really struggle, because they do look the same when we sell them, you could put a little bit of nail varnish on one and not the other perhaps, but I can usually tell just by looking at them. And also when you stab them in, 36 will make a bigger hole. Yes, next question. Liz Taylor on Facebook says, how do you do the ends of the stamen? Oh, I snipped them off, Liz, yeah? So, do you not have little balls on the end? No, no not oh, on the poppy. Oh, sorry, not on the poppy. Oh, yes, I make, I make felt uh, pollen. Yeah, so in my book, it shows you how to make felt pollen. I mean, you know, I went to ridiculous extremes. I refused when I was making this book to go and buy anything ready-made. So there's no bits of silk or this or that in there. It's all made from felt. So when you're making the pollen, you are making really, 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 really tiny, 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 tiny balls. And again, I usually stiffened them using the stiffened stuff because it makes them more compacted and easy to use. And then sometimes I would use a pair of tweezers and the Gemtac glue to stick them onto the end of a stamen. Yeah, I mean, looking back on it, oh, it, you know, <laughs> it was a bit crazy me trying to do everything out of felt, but it, I think it looks better. I think it looks, oh yeah, I do think it looks better. I think it's, it's good that it's all made out of felt. Yeah, so that's how I do them. Tiny, tiny pieces, felted first with the soap in the water and, and rolling them around to get them felted, rinsing them out, putting them in the stiff and stuff, and then gluing them in place. So that's what happened with all of these. So with the, the fuchsia here, all of the little brown bits on the end are separate bits of felt that have been attached to the stamens that I made. But these are these are lovely and straight. You see, these have all been stiffened. It's a prime example of how this worked well. And then, you know, the, the flower petals have been shaped over like little balls that I used, like little plastic balls that I used. 
uh, so they all kept their shape and were cup-like. Anyway, it's all in the book. It's all in the book. So I just wanted to show you a few more bits because I felt like the first time we did it, it was all a bit distant. Um, I wasn't paying any attention. What books are in? You really weren't, were like... well, you? I've just held it up and talked about it several times. Felt oh, yeah. Fabulous Flowers. Oh, right. Who wrote that? Oh, stop it. All right, so... Any more questions there? Shall I quickly move on to what we're doing next time? So, as many of you probably already know, we're in the process of move, moving premises. Next week is our manic painting weekend, so I'm not going to be here next weekend because I'll probably be on Instagram documenting our painting if you're interested. But the weekend after, the, after that, the next live tutorial I'm going to be doing is quite, quite different. I'm going to be showing you how to make a double-sided lampshade 30 centimetre drum lampshade, okay. This one that I've already made has got velvet on the outside. You can probably see some velvets behind me here. It's got this one on the outside and it's got some cotton on the inside. It's got, these are all of our Odile cottons and velvets. I've used the green cotton on the inside. I've used the turquoise velvet on the outside, but there's lots of options available. You don't need to do what I've done. Then I've done a red tassel trimming on the edge and I've just done some, um, ribbon to hide the seams so uh, these kits are now available on our website they're under new we've got a limited number so if you're Im interested in doing this on, it's going to be on Saturday the 26th of September um, we'll ba be back again at 11 o'clock on that day and I'll be showing you how to make this lampshade um, these are the pieces of the velvet how we sell them we, we sell them in half meters when we move we're hoping to start selling this by the meter as well on the bolt but for now we've got them in half meters so if anyone's interested in doing that it's under new on our website and I'll, I'll do um, a link on here as well if YouTube will let it on YouTube if it will let me I'll do some links on social media as well so that's coming up on Saturday, 26th of September. What else do I need to tell you? Any more questions before we depart on this lovely sunny day to get on with our days? Liz Taylor's asking, have you got any stag ones? Stag ones? Well, velvet. This Oh, the velvet. No, yes, no, this one. This, stags on this it, one's it? got stags on it. They're, they all vary. If you look on our website under fabric, I think it's under needlework sewing fabric something like that at the top or just type in uh velvet it will come up okay so there's several different ones some of them have got fish on them that are called enchanted pond this one can't remember the name no oh is it on here no i can't remember the name but this one's got stags on it and do you know how much that is uh, Joyce, Joy, sorry, Joyce Strauss is asking. It's on, it's on our website. It's I don't know, website. I don't know. And sorry. Kerry's saying Saturday, not Sunday. Sunday yes, it's Saturday, Saturday for the next one. Saturday, not 26th Sunday. of September, not Sunday. I know there's so much going on. We're kind of juggling at the moment because of lockdown, lots of postponed courses and moving and all sorts. But that's when we're going to do it. Saturday, the 26th of September, I'll be doing the lampshade. Yes? Yes. Good, okay. Are you ready with our special new jingle, Christopher? Are we ready ever. to sing along? He's ever, ever ready, he's ever about to say ready. ever ready. He's so tired. Okay, I will see you next time. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in, guys. It's chilly and glad ride. It's chilly and glad ride. It's chilly and glad ride. Yeah.